Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the structure and function of cranial nerve 7, which is the facial nerve, and in the process we'll also look at most of its important distributions and branches. So right here we can kind of see inside the skull, and over here is the brainstem, and this structure right here is the pons. Now remember that the facial nerve actually originates from the pons. If we think about the brainstem, really the midbrain has the origins of cranial nerves 3 and 4, and the pons would be cranial nerves 5 through 8. So facial nerve certainly falls in that range. So here's the facial nerve originating from the pons, and you can see, while it's still within the cranium, it forms this enlargement called the geniculate ganglion. Now, the geniculate ganglion has several branches. One of them that still remains in the skull, at least initially, is the greater petrosal nerve. If we follow that greater petrosal nerve, eventually it will exit the cranium, and it will move to something called the pterogopalatine ganglia. This has large parasympathetic control over several structures near the eyes, one of which is the lacrimal glands. So in other words, the facial nerve through this greater petrosal nerve is going to be able to stimulate the lacrimal glands to produce tears. But that's all through this pterogopalatine ganglion, which exerts parasympathetic control over that and other structures. Now back to the geniculate ganglion, there's another branch here, which is probably the one you're used to talking about, it kind of descends downwards, and it's going to exit through this little hole right here called the stylomastoid foramen. Let's take a look at an inferior view of the skull right here. Obviously the mandible's been removed, here's your foramen magnum just to give you some reference, and then right here you see this little spike coming down, that's of course the styloid process. And then this right here, kind of behind your ear, is the mastoid process. And so this little hole here between the styloid and mastoid processes is aptly named the stylomastoid foramen. And so the facial nerve proper is going to kind of exit inferiorly from the inside of the cranium through that stylomastoid foramen. So you can see that pretty good right here. The facial nerve proper descends down through the cranium and exits through that stylomastoid foramen, and very quickly it bifurcates into two branches. There's one branch that goes posterior. This is actually the posterior auricular nerve. And then there's a larger branch that goes anterior, and that's really going to be the focus of what we're going to talk about in this video. But let's first talk about that posterior branch. So here's another picture. Again, that facial nerve would have exited through that stylomastoid foramen, presumably behind the ear right here, can't really see it. And there's one branch here that goes posteriorly. This is your posterior auricular nerve, auricular referring to the ear. The posterior auricular nerve is going to innervate a couple of muscles that we don't normally think about. Uh, one of them is this muscle that you see right here a little bit of. This is the auricularis posterior. Um, not everybody can move their ears. Some people don't really have control over any of these muscles, but uh, for people that can uh, control movements of their ears, and for other animals like cats that really can move their ears, it's the posterior auricular nerve that actually innervates the one in the back. Okay? And then this nerve will actually keep going, you can't see the rest of it, but it will actually go to innervate the occipitalis muscle in the back, which forms a functional uh, muscular unit with the frontalis in the front right here. Now even though the facial nerve branches here to give off this posterior auricular nerve, uh, the vast majority of the fibers are actually going into this anterior branch, and so for that reason we're just going to term this the facial nerve going forward. Okay? So the facial nerve going anteriorly here is actually going to penetrate this gland right here. This gland is the parotid gland. And so the facial nerve actually literally goes into the parotid gland, inside of it. Uh, this little oval right here is meant to show a cutout so you can see inside the parotid gland. And so the facial nerve, once inside the parotid gland, then gives off a bunch of branches as you can see right here. And once these branches form, each individual branch then exits the parotid gland at a different point. Okay? And there are five branches right here that you typically need to know. They're color-coded. We've got the temporal branch, zygomatic branch, buccal branch, marginal mandibular branch, and the cervical branch right here. 
And there's a neat way you can memorize these from superior to inferior, and I have no idea the origin of this. It just kind of rolls off the tongue. But the five main branches of the facial nerve are to Zanzibar by motor car. Makes no sense to me. I looked this up. I can't really find where it comes from, but it just kind of rolls off the tongue, and it gives you the first letter of each of these branches. To Zanzibar by motor car. So two is temporal. That's the first one in green up here. And the temporal one... Uh, is going to supply facial muscles of the orbital region and the forehead, including frontalis. The second one, Zanzibar, is zygomatic. That's this one here in purple or pink. Uh, the zygomatic branches are going to go to the zygomatic muscles, the orbital muscles, and infraorbital regions. Okay. The bi here in yellow is the buccal branches. These are here in yellow. And the way you can think about these is, generally speaking, those are the ones that are going to go closest to the mouth and the lips. However, to be specific, the buccal branches supply the cheek and the upper lip, whereas the lower lip is gonna be supplied by the marginal mandibular branches. So motor, M, is marginal mandibular. You can see those in blue. Um, they're gonna be right below the buccal branches. Normally, they're gonna be offset from the mouth a little bit. Um, buccal branches closest to the mouth. Marginal mandibular, though, is gonna supply the lower lip and the chin. And then this green one down here at the bottom, the lowest, is the cervical uh, branch. That's the car in this little acronym type of thing. And the cervical branch is going to supply the neck, specifically innervating the platysma muscle. One thing to notice here is that the marginal mandibular branches and the cervical branches, they actually travel deep to the platysma muscle. Okay, So you can actually see the platysma right here. Notice it's actually been cut. And so technically the platysma would overlie the blue marginal mandibular and the green cervical right here. They go underneath it or deep to it, okay? Now, one other very important thing here to understand is the difference between a facial muscle and then mastication muscles, okay? The mastication muscles are four muscles that we use to chew. They're basically responsible for movements of the temporomandibular joint. And those are the masseter, which you can actually see right here. This muscle is actually the masseter. There's the temporalis, which is up here, and then two deeper ones, which are called the lateral and medial pterygoids. Those are mastication muscles. The mastication muscles are distinct from the facial muscles because the mastication muscles are innervated by a branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. The trigeminal nerve has three branches. It has an ophthalmic nerve, which is branch 1, a maxillary nerve, branch 2, and then a mandibular nerve, which is branch three. The mandibular nerve, which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve, is the nerve that supplies the muscles of mastication. And then the facial muscles, which are all these other muscles that we just talked about, these are innervated by some branch of the facial nerve. The confusion comes from the fact that the facial nerve also has a mandibular branch like the trigeminal nerve. And so usually to differentiate the two, uh, if we're referring to the one that's coming from the facial nerve, we'll say marginal mandibular nerve. And then when we talk about the one coming from the trigeminal nerve, we'll often give it this designation V3. The V is technically Roman numeral 5, indicating it's from the trigeminal nerve, and then so V3, because it's the third branch. So sometimes they won't even use the term mandibular nerve, they'll just use V3. We'll be talking about the trigeminal nerve in a separate video. And then when we look at the facial nerve, this is given the term marginal mandibular. Okay, So to Zanzibar by motor car, temporal, zygomatic, buccal, marginal mandibular, and cervical. Let's look at a couple more views of this just to get it down. So again, right here you see the facial nerve exiting that stylomastoid foramen inferiorly. You see that posterior auricular nerve going back behind the ear, going to first auricularis posterior and also occipitalis. Then here is that facial nerve proper entering the parotid gland. You can see it branching several times. Temporal branch up here. Zygomatic branch up here. Buccal branch here going towards the mouth, really getting more of that upper lip. You can see the marginal mandibular branch right here. Uh, part of it actually curves around and connects with the buccal branches, but this one's getting the lower lip and the chin, and then down here is the cervical branch. You can actually see here very well uh, the platysma, and this is showing that the platysma overlays the marginal mandibular and the cervical branches of the facial nerve. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the facial nerve structure, its function, and how it distributes anteriorly.
Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.